Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, entitled Open Public Meetings Act. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided as specified in the Act. Proper notice of this meeting was provided in the notice of May 9, 2011. Said notice was posted at the entrance of the Board of Education offices, mailed to the Nutley Sun, Star Ledger, North Jersey Herald News, and the Nutley Journal, mailed to the Nutley Township Clerk, advertised in the Nutley Sun on May 19, 2011, posted on the district website. This is an official meeting. Please stay in for a flag salute and a moment of silence in commemoration of 9 11. <coughs> September 27th, and also we'll be moving the October 31st meeting, which would have been which is Halloween, to November 1st on Tuesday. The other thing is we'll be forming two ad hoc committees uh, for negotiations: one for the teachers uh, and one for the custodians. Negotiations, and we're forming that now so we can do the preparation work necessary uh, to enter to those negotiations. Superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Cutler. Um, there is that age-old, it seems age-old now, Staples commercial, uh, where you have parents gleefully tripping through aisles to the south of Andy Williams. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And I can honestly say, as the superintendent of Nutley, that in spite of the children who are drearily trudging on behind their parents through the aisles, that it really is the most wonderful time of year to be an educator. Uh, here in Nutley, buildings are open, faculty and staff are back, and the students have returned for another exciting year. Uh, I want to thank Ms. James, uh, Mr. Riga, Mr. Nicolette, and his staff and custodians, maintenance and grounds workers, for the absolutely incredible job they did uh, ensuring that our buildings were ready to open. We are currently working on one issue uh, that arose at Spring Garden School due to the, the recent rains. Uh, due to a leak in the roof, the floors began cupping. We're working with the construction manager and the roofing and flooring companies to rectify the situation as quickly as possible. In the interim, students are able to use half of the gym uh, for their class activities, and a message was public uh, was posted to the public by the New Spring Garden principal, Ms. LaGuardia, on the school's website. We kick off the year as a staff here at the middle school. This week, we opened as a group and discussed common vision and common language. Faculty and staff worked through true critical professional developments, uh, development sessions. The first frame of our work with common language, establishing our goal and clearly defining the role of each member of our administration, faculty, and staff. The second focus on the district's new harassment, intimidation, and bullying policy uh, in line with the new state department. The opening was the culmination of the diligence and, and collaboration of members of all areas of our staff. The leaders of our associations have worked with me continually through the summer to ensure a strong opening. I want to thank them. I also want to commend all the administrators and teachers who, in a very short time period, were willing to stand up as leaders amongst their peers over the past week and the willingness that all of our educators have shown in participating in new kinds of conversations. Which brings me to the best part of opening the new year. Students, they are back, they are learning, they are in classes, in their activities, they are on our, in our schools and on our fields and stages. Uh, we kicked off what I am certain to be, uh, will be yet another successful season of athletic competition. Uh, there were dances held last week among other community events. Uh, in all, the Nelly School District is energized, we promise of another year, and I'm excited about the work to come. My wife and I had the uh, honor of attending the 9-11 memorial service yesterday. And all I can say is that how moved both of us were with the involvement and connection of everyone in the community. For the school district, this year will mark continued engagement with our local stakeholders and consistent leveraging of technology in order to bring us closer together. And this year, we will, this will be a year we continue all of our meaningful work shaping the district and setting goals to ensure the success of all students and earning the trust and support of our entire community. Thank you. Board Secretary's report. 
committee reports. Before I ask for the committee reports, I just want to mention that uh, we in touch with the chair persons of each of the committees, that we have a meeting of the chair people with the superintendent and business administrator to discuss how we're functioning as, as uh, committees and, and structure. Uh, any committee reports? Have you got a date, Jim, that you plan on the meeting? Or no, we'll, we'll have to okay. talk about when we do that. No, I, I, we are going to have planning on a meeting next week, though, that um, yes. Are we, on, are we on for Monday or is that? We hadn't confirmed the date, okay. but if that works for the, for the administrative committee, we can do that. Five. The finance committee meeting uh, will be Wednesday at 4 o'clock. During this meeting of the chairs, what will you be discussing exactly? Is it? Is it is the role of the chairs. And that will be summing through the chair for the rest of the meeting. And I think there will be. We'll talk to all of us. Absolutely. Any other three reports? If not, we now come to the portion of our meeting where we allow members of the public to address the board. In this section, we allow questions and or comments on only the resolutions addressed in tonight's agenda. Our board regulations allow 20 minutes for these communications. Each person shall be limited to three minutes. We ask you to try to stay within this requirement. Speakers may speak more than once only after all others wishing to speak on the topic have been heard. All statements will be directed to me as a chairperson and no one may address the board members individually. Please be reminded that if your statement is too lengthy, personally directed, abusive, obscene, irrelevant, or redundant, your participation may be terminated. Please remember always to state your name and address each and every time you address the board. The first person which will be heard, please don't go Good evening, Mr. President, Alan Thomas, 108 McKinney Street. Mr. President, I rise to ask two questions about Business Administrator Resolution Number One and Only, which is a change order for ESR mechanical contractors uh, that has two parts. One is for upgrade of electrical panels, the other one is for uh, asbestos abatement. First thing I know is the asbestos abatement was completed last summer. I don't know if that means the summer of 2011 or 2010, but either of that, uh, I find it disquieting to see that the board is now, for the first time, either approving payment of stuff that was done already, as opposed to paying, uh, approving it in the, in the bank. Um, the second has to do with the electrical panel. I'm not against making sure our electrical panels and all our buildings are up to code, Mr. President, but it seems to me that this is not the first resolution we've seen where change order is going through for the upgrade of the electrical panel. And this is change order number six, I noticed. And I'm just wondering, I don't remember what the original contract was for, since this is a change order, uh, but it just seems to me that is, did something just change the code since the original contract was uh, uh, entered into on the electrical panels? Why wasn't the electrical panel in the original business specification? And if you don't have an answer, that's okay. I will get it next week. Well, this was in board briefing over the past couple of weeks, but in my, in my understanding is that when they did go through, the assumption was that these panels were under scope. And what they're finding is they're now able to open the panels, is that they are not, so in order to maintain compliance and make sure that our students are safe and we to do good. To, to clarify, if I may, uh, Mr. Allen, we, we as board members had the same concerns. Obviously, uh, we, were, we were concerned about the same, almost identical question. And, and the feedback that we received um, is that at the time when they did put this panel in, believe it or not, it certainly seemed to fit the requirements that they needed then. Um, obviously, it doesn't do that now. I, I'm also perplexed on why this wasn't done at the time. Uh, but it needs to be done now to make that panel safe and be able to carry the load. So we need to go along with this. Although we're, we're all concerned that it should have been part of the referendum, or part of the uh, resolution right from the beginning. Yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't have to work on it. I'm just wondering who's accountable for this? 
we, we obviously, the Board of Edison obviously is the the board of but is obviously some board members have been in touch with Mrs. Yamins and the superintendent to hold someone accountable, or at least give us some answers on why we didn't start out with the right panel from the beginning. Uh, but that that is being checked into, but I don't know at this time who was accountable. Okay. I mean, I, I'm just a plain country lawyer, Mr. Kizzle, no. I know nothing about no. anything. But when I redid my kitchen, the first thing my electrician did when I he came in to offer a business, you're going to need a new panel. <laughs> you know, the previous explanation when we had similar kind of change order is that when the architect comes in, he's not a licensed electrician. He cannot pull the panel off. And look what's inside of it. And, and to do so, they, were, they didn't hire an electrician to do that. And now as the electrician comes in and looks at it and says, this has got to be upgraded to be code, that's when you discover these things. But, then but that's the way it is, and we want to have, as you say, we want it to be safe for the students. We've got to go forward with it. No, and, that's uh, not the issue for me. I understand the issue. Your issue is who's going to be held accountable. I mean, didn't the electricians open up the panel? Not when the architects do the design, and the architects do the well, Then the electricians get an opportunity to inspect before they submit the bid. I guess those same questions. We have the contractors here. And before the bid and before the specs, the two that were here were not the electricians, but they don't hire, they don't bring the electrician in, they don't open the panels up, so they said that's why this occurs. So we're not nobody's disagreeing with you that it's not right, but the architect and um, the other construction manager who was here, and I asked that question, I was just talking to Ms. Flynn about it, they asked the exact same question and they said that that's not done. And once the contract is won, then they open the panels up and find. They said it would take them, we'd have to pay a lot of extra money if we hired them ahead of time to go pull all the panels apart to find out what the violations are until they open the walls. Because the wall has to be open. They said, I asked not just the cover, I asked the question. Mm -hmm. It's not just the cover, they said. It's when they open the physical wall around it, they find whether there's violations or not. And that's when this occurs. I did ask those questions. Thank you. Anyone else wish to hear? Thank you, Mr. Good. If not, I'll close this portion of the meeting. Ms. Flynn, would you move superintendent's resolutions one through five, please? Um, Mr. President, I'd like to move superintendent resolutions number one through five. Yes, I'll second, and I'd just like to make a statement if I could on the well, that discussion. Okay, I'm sorry, Jack. Um, the first resolution of Frank Fonsosato, he, um, if, if the board members don't know, he was an outstanding fireman with the township of Nutley, retired, and then came here as a custodian and served as well on the Board of Education. Frank is, is a dedicated man that's been through some diabetes issues in his life, and um, I, I wish him well in his retirement. Thank you. Any other discussion? If I could just on Frank, even if he came in this building over the summer, does he really want to try and work? He was sitting on a chair just doing the combinations of the locks because his diabetes was getting so bad. So, I mean, he, he was dedicated, used his sick time the wrong way, and in fact, was trying not to use it to work on locks. So, I just have to say the same thing about him. Thank you. Any other discussions? Not cold roll, please. This is Dan Check Martin. Yes. Ms. Flynn? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Dr. Reed? Yes. Mr. Rogers? Yes. Mrs. Russo? Yes. Mrs. Scalera? Yes. Mrs. Vizzotto? Yes. Mr. Cookta? Yes. Dr. Reed, we move Board Administrator, Board Secretary's resolution number one, please. Yes, Mr. President. I would like to move Board Secretary's resolution number one, as stated. Second. Second. Discussion? Yes. Um, Mr. President, um, like Mr. Kaczynski noted earlier in response, and everyone has noted in response to Mr. Thomas's comment, the, um, the change order process has been a little bit flawed, I think, in terms of giving us as board members sufficient information by which we can make a judgment. Um, it's unfortunate, you know, the work, the work is necessary, we need to be safe um, and make sure they have a safe environment, but I would just strongly urge that you know, in the future I get better, demand better information from our professionals. Thank you. Any other discussion? <coughs> if not, call the roll, please. This is Dan Check Martin. Yes. Ms. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Gupta? Mr. Kaczynski? 
Yes. Dr. B. Yes. Mr. Rogers. Yes. Mrs. Russo. Yes. Mrs. Scalera. Yes. Mrs. Cazada. Yes. Yes. Hearing of the citizens. In this section, we allow questions or comments on all school-related matters. Our regulation is allowed 30 minutes for these communications. Again, each person is limited to three minutes, and we ask you to try to stay within this requirement. As stated earlier, all statements will be directed to me as chairperson, and no one may address the board members individually. Please remember that if your statement is too lengthy, personally directed, abusive, obscene, irrelevant, or redundant, your participation may be terminated. Please remember also to state your name and address each and every time you address the board. First person must wishing to be heard, please step forward. Good evening, Hi, Chris Ocija, 61 Grand Avenue. Um, here as a member of the Academic Booster Club, or more or less the coordinator of the Let's Learn program, I want to publicly thank the superintendent and the Board of Education for their support of the program. Without you, uh, we couldn't run the program without your support. And we had over 200 children who enjoyed learning over the summer with all the courses that we offered. And I would especially like to recognize Mrs. James and uh, Mr. Nicolette because they always find new children and they help us fit in there. So thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? You heard. Thank you, Mr. President. Alan Thomas again. Uh, Mr. President, I ask that the superintendent post his uh, encouraging remarks on the, the uh, district's website uh, so that everyone can, can be similarly enthused. Uh, I thought it was very nice. And I know it's already written down because I can see you reading it. So. <laughs> it would be great to have something like that on, on our website. Um, I have another comment. Anyone Sorry. else wishing to be heard? Hi, Diane Bolton, 53 Lakeside Drive. Um, I'm just not aware if Nutley has in place a special education parent advisory group in accordance with the code. Anybody? We'll have to get back to you on that. Okay, so that I don't know the answer to that. We'll get back okay. to so how do we get one in place? Well, first, let's find out where we're at, and we'll get some more details. Okay, so you're going to reach out to me personally, or how does that work? I have to come back to the next meeting, or you're going to post it somewhere? You have an email address. Why don't you give me the email address? Very good. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shane, Ms. Quirk is here, because I'm sure she could answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Thomas? Yes, Mr. Thomas. <laughs> um, I just had a question. I was reading uh, the NJ Hometown Message Board. And, uh, first mistake. Always that. Your first mistake. Could you please go forward? Yes, thank you. Um, and there was somebody posted there, and I would like to know whether it's true or not. You know, I'm checking to see whether what's there is actually true. And there was talk about, um, and it's funny because Mr. Lazard mentioned the, the trip to Staples, because that was the subject of some postings, and uh, some parents were expressing the wish that teachers would provide their requirements for their class before school opened, so there wasn't this big Wednesday night rush to Staples and things like that. And that got me thinking, do we really require students to purchase things so that they may be in class? Uh, and is there, and these kinds of things? I mean, I'm, I'm just curious, what kind of things are we requiring students to purchase to be able to participate in a class? Uh, as far as requirement, I don't know any student who was turned away for not having anything on supply list. I can tell you that at times it changed out, is no different than any other school district in the sense that I have a kindergarten who just started, and she's starting in two different kindergartens, so I got two different supply lists that I had. Everything from tissue boxes to two pocket folders to colored crayons. Again, everyone on the elementary level, this usually is one of the things that's been going on for years now. So yes, I, and our teachers, as far as how we get the information out, which is a valid point, we're working to make sure that next year's summer, 
looks differently than it has in the past and that everything from class lists and assignments to supply lists and information from me, from principals, from teachers, goes out in a different manner um, using technology and the rest. So it's more important we don't have that Wednesday rush. But yes, we, I, teachers certainly do provide supply lists for different, for different levels. Probably the best thing we could do in June, just before they leave, they get it for the next year. Absolutely. And, 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 but this hasn't changed. My daughter's been out of elementary school for over 10, in excess of 10 years. And I remember going to Staples when school started to buy supplies. Same kind of things. So this is not new. The word requirement, though, a bit. It's just well, a requirement. That, thank you, Mr. Gupta. That's, that's the word I focused on, requirement. Uh, and there was even a, another. There was another post that said, and we were lucky. One of our teachers gave us until Monday, so we didn't have to rush Wednesday to get everything. Are, are students penalized if they don't have the required thing? No. No. Okay. Thank you for your. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other person should be heard. If not, I'll close this portion of the meeting. Any old business? Any new business? Yes, um, I, I have to recognize two things, uh, Mr. Lazovich and uh, Mr. Barry, the principal of high school. Um, I was having a dinner at my uh, mother-in-law's and my niece came in and said, the superintendent and the principal are walking all the classrooms and all the hallways. And he told me my shorts were too short and don't come back to school with them tomorrow like that. That is a success in my book. When we spoke with uh, Mr. Lazovich on, on hiring him, and our interview with Mr. Barry, we talked about the clothing, the ID cards. I know somebody else uh, said it earlier. Uh, the ID cards are being enforced at the high school. You know, I tell everybody, give it some time. We have a new superintendent, new principal, changes in the wind that's coming. I'd like to thank both of them for being in the schools. The, kid, the students are recognizing it, and they're being made to change. ID tags and clothes, that is both the success. It'll make it easier on the teachers and easier as we go along forward this year. So. Mr. Lazic, you're out. Thank you. You'll have to pass it out to you, Mr. Barry. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rusak. Yes, I, I just want to add on to Mr. Thomas's comments. Um, about what is required um, for the first day of school. In addition to that, the dozens of papers that get sent home. If, if you have more than one student and you get inundated with the papers, we don't know what needs to be returned, what doesn't need to be returned. Can we please look? At, at modernizing, updating, and, and putting some of these forms online so that perhaps we can just access an email and check off, you know, nothing's changed from the last 11 years my child's been in school, um, so that we can save paper, number one, and, and a lot of work. I think the goal of the district is to be as paperless as possible, but also the other part of it is to be as clear as possible on instructions. Thank you. Thank you. Any other new business? If not, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. You're on motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Beat Tommy. You beat Tommy. Channel B's record. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little inside joke here.